Hi, I'm Ron. Thanks for checking this out. You know, a lot of the expressive power and range in our flute playing has to do with how we use our breath and what goes on inside our mouth. So today we're going to talk about a really important basic technique called single tonguing. Now, even if you've been playing for years and you can not only single tongue, but double tongue and triple tongue and flutter tongue and the whole works, uh, stick around because we're going to be looking at some exercises that you might find helpful. And then uh, look at some ways that we can use our tonguing creatively to give greater expressive range to our music. So grab your favorite medium A flute and let's get started. As always, if you find this video helpful, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really does help to get the word out. Maybe share this with a friend or with your flute circle the next time you guys get together. And uh, as we go into this, uh, some of you classical flute players out there might find some of the things I'm saying to be just really off base. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is for today. Now, how do we use our tongues to help shape and articulate notes? I'm going to go up and down the first bit of basic scale without using my tongue at all. All right, very smooth, very connected. Now I'm going to use my tongue to give a slight articulation to each note. Now, I'm keeping my air moving constantly all the way through there. I'm just using a little flip of my tongue uh, against the back of, of my upper teeth to articulate the notes. And I can make that even stronger if I want to. If I want to, I can even stop the breath between the notes and, and make space between the notes. All right, so what's going on in there? Now, I know some flute players who use their tongue like almost be between their lips, like I'm exaggerating so that you can see it. For me, that doesn't work on these flutes. It, it may be great in some traditions and on some flutes, but on these flutes, it doesn't work for me. What I tend to think of is uh, the letter T, T. What I like about that is that I use just the very tip of my tongue then, and uh, I can control it in a lot of different ways, but it doesn't get in the way of the airstream. Now, if I want a really, really gentle tonguing, sometimes I'll move it more towards a D sound, like a da 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 right? Now, I know in some languages, D and L consonants are, have less difference about them than they do in English. So you can experiment depending on what language you grew up in or what you feel comfortable in, just experiment with some of those consonants. But for me, T works really well. Now, I like to think of ta 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 rather than ta 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 when I do this because, you know, look at my jaw, ta 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 ta. If I go to an ah sound, the temptation is for my jaw to move along with everything, and that disrupts my lips, right? And I need those to stay in, in the right embouchure for the air to get through into the flute the way I like. So for me, a nice uh, compromise uh, vowel sound is kind of a... So you can experiment for yourself. Right? T, D, L, depending on your language. I mean, like in Salagi, we even have a, a consonant, tla, tla, it's kind of like T and L put together, but that's too fussy for this. So I go more towards just a, a light T sound with just the tip of my tongue uh, so that I can really control it and make it move quickly when I want it to. So, if you've never done this before, how do you begin to acquire this technique so that you can use it too? Uh, now, if you haven't done it before, be patient with yourself. It may take a little time to get used to things. Uh, I find uh, a nice way to get started with it is to really kind of take the flute out of the equation. If you've seen some of my other videos uh, about breathing and, and uh, getting the air connected, uh, you know that I like to start people off just kind of blowing into the palm of their hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
gently as though they were trying to make a, can a candle flicker but not go out. And you can do a, a similar kind of thing here. Just get your palm up in, in front of your mouth and start your air going. And then just uh, gently make those little T or D sounds with the tip of your tongue against, uh, my tongue usually ends up towards the, 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 the top of my, uh, my upper teeth here in the back, of course. Ta, ta, ta. All right, so keep your airstream going and see if you can just make those little ta, ta sounds with your tongue. What, but you want to feel the airstream almost continuously. It'll be just the slightest little break as you'd use make the T sound, but you really want to feel that airstream almost continuously. Sometimes we want to separate notes, but sometimes we just want to use our tongue to articulate a really, really smooth line. And there are other reasons that for now we're going to keep that airstream going. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, once that is uh, feeling comfortable, you put your hand down and try maybe vocalizing it. Some people find it really helpful to vocalize. So sustain maybe an uh sound and see if your tongue can make the, the, the little consonant articulations. Ta, 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 ta. Once that is feeling nice and comfortable, grab your flute. Now, a lot of times just jumping in and trying to do this all the way up and down basic scale can be really, really challenging at first. So again, we're going to make it as simple as possible. I recommend starting with just this fingering. So we're going to keep the air sustaining just like we were before, but we're going to try to articulate repeated notes within that air stream. And this is kind of the sound that we're after. And you can do that as often and as long as you need to, to begin to feel comfortable with the idea of using your tongue in this way. And you can try it with less force. You can try it with more force. Just experiment a little bit before you try playing a lot of stuff on your flute. Just get comfortable putting your air through your flute on one fingering while you get used to using your tongue this way. All right, so now we are ready to start uh, playing other notes on our flute as we tongue. And the great challenge here is going to be to get our tongue and our fingers coordinated. There's a timing issue involved here, and this is one of the reasons we've been practicing sustaining our breath. Because when we use our tonguing with a real sustained, smooth breath, uh, it will tell you if your tongue and your fingers are not in sync. So, for example, if, if you're going up and down basic scale and start hearing things like this, that means that either your tongue is ahead of your fingers or your fingers are ahead of your tongue, but they're not moving together. Our goal is to get to something like this. So our tongue and our fingers are moving at exactly the same time. Now, you know, we love bending our pitches. It's really, really fun to give a strong articulation to a note and then slide someplace else like this. All right, but we want to decide when to use that rather than just doing it because we're out of sync with ourselves. So a lot of times people find it easy, easier to break this down into smaller units before trying to do all of basic scale tonguing. So a nice exercise to start to do this is to just go back and forth between fingering one and fingering two of basic scale. You might try something like this at first. Then when that's feeling really comfortable, maybe try this. And then when you're ready for the big plunge,
you can practice any pair of notes that you want to on your flute this way, and it'll just help your fingers and your tongue to get in sync. You might even try something like this. Notes that aren't even right next to each other in the scale. Right then, when all of that is feeling really, really good, you're ready for that next plunge. You can maybe start stretching it out note by note by note until finally you can get all the way up and down basic scale. I'm going to try to turn on my metronome here, see if you can hear it. Nope, I don't think you're going to be able to hear it. Some people find it really helpful to work with a metronome. There, there are nice free metronome apps that you can get for your phone. Uh, here's the one that I use, and I'm going to break away for just a second and show you uh, how you can use your metronome to practice your tonguing. All right, here is my metronome app, and I have it set at a very uh, comfortable uh, BPM of 86. So I'm gonna turn it on now, and as it goes, I'm going to try to be in sync with it and play up and down basic scale, tonguing one note with each click of the metronome. You can start either faster or slower, wherever your comfort zone is, but I would recommend slower to begin with. And then as you get comfortable, you can kind of, uh, as you can see, it's pretty easy to scroll up to a higher speed here. I'm going to go up to about, oh, I don't know, let's say 134. If you're new to tonguing, you will want to do that incrementally. Don't just jump 50 clicks on the metronome all at once. All right, so um, the, the metronome app that I use is called Pro Metronome. I believe there's still a free version available uh, for iPhone. So go check that out if you don't already have a metronome or a metronome app. And uh, you might find it really helpful um, getting used to the idea of tonguing. Okay, once all of that is feeling really, really strong and secure, we want to keep things fresh, we want to keep things creative, we don't want our practice to get boring. So once you're comfortable doing single tonguing on every single note, all the way up and down basic scale, start to change things up. How does it feel different if you tongue every other note of basic scale? Maybe you'll want to challenge yourself to do that and click that metronome up one notch each day to see if you can start to build up more velocity in your playing as well. What happens if you tongue every third note of basic scale? Well, now I have to go around basic scale several times just to get back to where I'm tonguing the bottom note uh, at the beginning of a group. It, it sounds like this. And that's a really, really good one because it, it, it forces your tongue and your fingers to be working uh, almost in cross patterns. So it really develops a, a nice independence. So keep looking for different ways. You can even try uh, different modes. If you want to. All right, so, so keep your practice fresh. Try to be creative even as you practice your technique, and then you'll almost look forward to it every day. It, it becomes a, a part of your creativity rather than just drudgery that you have to go through to try to be able to do what you want to do on the flute. At any point along the way, when you're starting to feel comfortable with some of this stuff, start exploring how it can bring more expression and more power to your flute playing. 
Uh, I'm going to play just a simple sequence of pitches. Here's the pitches uh, in basic scale fingerings. I number my basic scale fingerings 1 to 6, going from bottom to top. So this sequence sounds like this. I'm not going to use any tonguing at all at first here. Hit pause and try that out if you want, because I want you to try all of these things as we go along. All right, now I'm going to gently tongue each note in the sequence, and already it feels subtly different. This time I'm going to tongue some of the notes, but not all of them, but I'm going to make sure that I tongue the top one when I get there, just to give it a little extra emphasis. All right, you may have noticed that I just stretched that note a little bit too. It's kind of the top of the arch and I wanted to give it a, a little bit of special treatment. All right, this time I'm going to intentionally tongue every other note in the sequence. Very nice, gentle walking feel. Now I'm going to tongue every third note in the sequence. A completely different feel from tonguing every other note. All right now I'm going to tongue more quickly and leave space between the notes. And we have yet another completely different feel out of the same sequence of notes. So I'm going to nice keep a nice steady beat this time, and I'm going to go and tongue every other note up and down. And then I'm going to tongue every third note, but I'm going to keep my beat very, very steady. So those threes, when I get to them, they're going to happen with one, in one beat too, and that means that the notes are going to have to go by faster. See what this feels like. So these are just very simple little things that once you start to get your tonguing feeling confident, uh, you can start to use it really creatively to make changes of feel uh, and variations on the same pattern of pitches that, that, that bring a lot more variety to your flute playing. One of the things one of the things that I get asked an awful lot is how come all of my songs sound the same? The person is questioning me, how can I make my songs sound more interesting? Well, this is a really basic place to start. Get your tongue under control and use it to shape things. And before you know it, when you're playing with your friends, instead of you know wondering what to do next, maybe you can give them a nice little rhythm feel. Like I'm going to start here. Uh, we're going to make a, a little ostinato down on the bottom end of the flute for our, our friend to solo over. I'm going to start with just a real basic tricio pattern, and then we'll just kind of see where it goes for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You get the idea, right? So this is a really, really valuable technique to get under control. All that stuff that I was doing at the end there, I wasn't using double tonguing or triple tonguing or flutter tonguing or anything fancy like that. I was just using single tonguing and some barks and chirps. So start here and uh, we'll deal with double tonguing and triple tonguing and flutter tonguing another time, but single tonguing is the place to start. So have fun, be creative in your music making and your practicing. Just a few updates before we go away today. 
On other videos, you may have heard me talk about my project, The Way of Mountains and Deserts. Uh, it's a large piano piece that my good friend and uh, colleague Paul Barnes commissioned me to write for him to play this concert season. Paul's already played parts of the piece in Xanthi, Greece, and played the entire piece in Houston, Texas. Uh, he's playing it again in Philadelphia this month. And then we have concerts together in Nebraska towards the end of September, September 25th and September 26th. Uh, I will put a link to my website in the description box. You can get all that concert information at my website. I know that uh, one of the concerts is going to be live streamed, uh, so you can check out the link for that. Of course, the new piece will be included, but we're also doing a big piece of mine for native flute and piano, and I'm doing some of my Lunasiagua pieces or some version of them there as well. Uh, and I know uh, a couple of the regional PBS stations are recording the concerts for future use. So I'll keep posting links and updates about that as well. We also just got confirmation that we're doing a concert together in New York City in May. So looking forward to that as well. Uh, so check back in regularly and find out what's up. Uh, then also, uh, you've also heard me talk about my good friend and colleague, Don Avery. Uh, Don is a musician of Mohawk descent, a wonderful cellist and singer, songwriter, composer, on and on and on and on. A while back, she developed a project called the North American Indian Cello Project. For that project, she asked a number of her indigenous musician friends, me included, to write a piece for her to play on cello. And uh, we just got word that that entire project is going to be released on a Nova label uh, in the not too distant future. So check back in. I'll keep you posted on that as well. In the meantime, keep practicing your single tonguing. And I'd love to hear from you. Any comments and questions, anything, follow ups you want from what we did today? Uh, how do you like to practice your single tonguing? How do you like to use it in your music? All that kind of stuff. Love questions and comments. I think that's about it for today. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you again soon.